Today, the Tea Party Summit. In our Fox Business Studios, Sarah Palin, Ron Paul. Freedom Watch brings together leading libertarians. We want our liberties back. And social conservatives. Freedom is worth fighting for. Will these groups unite? What began with small rallies across the country is now changing American politics and maybe the future of our nation. Also with us today, trailblazers, icons, and organizers of this historic movement. Plus, Pennsylvania's outspoken Democratic Governor Ed Rendell is here to challenge everything the Tea Parties stand for. But as governments around the world descend into bankruptcy, as people realize that the federal government cannot right every wrong and protect us from every catastrophe, the front line in the fight for the soul of the Tea Party movement is here on this show. That government is best which governs least. The Constitution was written to keep the government off the people's backs. Paul Palin, now. A few quick thoughts from our Freedom File before we begin tonight's historic Tea Party Summit with our guests, former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin and Texas Congressman Ron Paul. The government keeps expanding. Does that make things better? Well, unemployment hovers around 10 percent. The stock market hovers around 10,000, just about where they were a decade ago. There has to be a better way. But the government's answer is more spending, over a trillion dollars in bailouts, two trillion in so-called stimulus packages, and a trillion and a half dollar budget deficit in this year alone. Government spending now takes up nearly half of all our domestic economic activities. By this measure, we are halfway to socialism. Meanwhile, the government has troops stationed all over the globe at nearly 900 different permanent military bases and equips police here in the U.S. like soldiers in order to raid the homes of alleged drug users. Still, conventional wisdom is that trying to shrink popular government programs is like touching the dangerous third rail of American politics, producing howls of protest. Wait a minute, though. Lately, there are protests against government growth and against government spending. The Tea Party protests that have sprung up across America. Will the groups that make up this movement stay focused on the message of limiting government and slowing spending? Or will differences over issues like religion, war, and immigration pull them apart? Let's find out. My first two guests are former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. She's also a Fox News contributor and Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Governor Palin, Congressman Paul, welcome here. Governor Palin, first to you. Will the Tea Party Coalition stick together? Absolutely. Uh, we have everything to lose if we don't hold together and um, help progress this nation, uh, looking at smaller, smarter government to govern and not look to bigger government. That's what the Tea Party movement is all about. So yes, it is in the nation's best interest for the Tea Party movement to stay together, to be banded together, united in um, the changes that we need to see take place in this country very quickly. What is it that animates the Tea Parties? How is it that this movement has come about almost over and overnight in enormous numbers to challenge the orthodoxy of the government? I, I think it's the recognition that government has failed. But big government has been around for a long time. Both parties have promoted it. But I think in the last few years, it's been recognized that it's not working. You know, people who even want the benefits are recognizing that, you know, the government's bankrupt, the country's bankrupt, and they're getting very f afraid and frightened. So I think that is it. The failure of government is uniting all the people now who are so concerned about it. Governor Palin, can we shrink big government or are we stuck with big government forever? We have to shrink the big government and the overreach that this intrusive Obama agenda is um, pressuring America to become. We have to. We have no choice. Uh, it's unsustainable what's going on right now, and we are on that path towards insolvency. So we have no choice. We have to shrink it. Some of our states and our conservative governors are trying exactly that on a more local level. Of course, it can be done, and it must be done. The right to keep and bear arms, the right to defend yourself, is this a right that only belongs to the government or to state militias? or is is this a natural right that belongs to every rational adult? I don't think of rights belonging to the government. I believe, I believe rights belong to the individual. 
and, and not in groups. I don't like to think of collective rights that people have rights because they belong to a group. No, the individual has a right to bear arms. But I don't even think you need that particular uh, saying because I think the right to own property should be enough to own and bear arms. But the Second Amendment and the Fifth Amendment means you have the right, and governments don't have uh, the rights. They have some obligations to protect rights, but they, they don't have the right that would supersede our right as individuals to own Governor rights. Palin, you're on the same page with Congressman Paul on this, are you not? The right to protect yourself by the use of a gun is an individual right and the government can't interfere with it. Absolutely, and thankfully our Constitution protects that. And as um, Congressman Paul is suggesting there, it's not our government or our Constitution that gives us our rights. It's our, it's our charters of liberty that protect our rights, including that right to protect ourselves via a gun if need be. Governor Palin, should the federal government have any say whatsoever in abortion? Uh, you know, I think that the government appropriately can have a say in abortion if you believe that a woman is pregnant with a child and that child has the right to life as um, endowed by our creator. So I do believe that there is an appropriate role for government to have a say there in terms of protecting that soon-to-be-born child. Do libertarians, Congressman Paul, recognize that the, that the child in the womb is a growing person with the same rights as a, as a person that's already been born? Well, I think it depends on which libertarian you talk to. The Libertarian Party is even mixed on this, even though their platform endorses, uh, you know, abortion to a degree. But I think it is an act of violence. The fetus has legal rights. I, as a physician, if I do something wrong, I can be sued. If there's an accident and the fetus is killed, they're liable. Inheritance rights are there uh, at conception. But acts of violence under our constitution i believe we're always meant to be dealt with at the local level at the state level so i would like to keep the federal government out as much as possible obviously no funding for abortion but uh, yes the states have an absolute right that's the reason i support the repeal of roe versus wade and allow the states to take care of the problems uh, governor palin does the federal government recognize any limits on its power or, or does it act as if it can right any wrong regulate any event and enact any tax that it wants, the Constitution notwithstanding. It's pretty pathetic that right now under the Obama administration, there seems to be a disrespect for the limited enumerated powers that the Constitution uh, mandates over our federal government. And, and that, too, is why the Tea Party movement is alive and well, and we're saying no more. There are limited powers uh, via the Constitution that uh, our, our uh, federal government must adhere to. But, you know, libertarians, they advocate for the maximum li liberty for for thought and, and for action, and nobody can argue with that. What can be argued, though, appropriately with healthy debate is how can we protect, via the Constitution, those liberties and advocate for even more liberties in this country while at the same time being able to appropriately allow government to govern according to the consent of the people to uh, provide services and some projects efficiently and effectively. The appropriate discussion there in debate is how can government play an appropriate role in providing those services? But government can't protect us from everything. Government couldn't stop the oil from coming out of the earth uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, even though the government told BP where to drill, and even though the government put uh, caps on BP's liability. What role is there for government in, in a crisis like this? Well, one thing is, is if, if they are obstructing, they ought to get out of the way. And in, in many ways, the federal government has obstructed. They have prevented property owners in the states to deal with some of the problems or the threat to their property. But the assumption is it's this, sort of this moral hazard that is involved when government grants the license and they're the regulators. People believe they're going to give us security, whether it's the SEC or the FDIC or or safety in mines, or safety when they give a, a right to drill. It's, it's, it's not dealt with the market. The market might have demanded that uh, there'd be more inspection. The insurance company might have been inspecting these uh, properties and these mines and these drilling. And under those circumstances, maybe they would have required bonds to be put up. So I think you could have a lot more safety if it was dealt through with the marketplace rather than depending on the government regulators.